Hey, everybody. Hey, John. Feel like I just talked to you. Uh, and hey, Blissful. And I owe Blissful some messages because she sent me a couple that I haven't answered yet. Hey, Russell. So it's good to see all you guys and gals in here. And uh, hopefully we'll have a few more before I am done with this. Now, I know I said yesterday that I was not going to talk about uh, the situation that I kind of skated around in the stream last night or yesterday evening. Excuse me, I was trying to eat a peanut butter sandwich too fast before I got on here. However, um, certain things have tra transpired in the last um, few hours um, that made me realize I need to say something. So, <clears throat> even though the posts have been removed, even though the person that did the post has been apologetic, I still feel it's my duty, since I was a part in the catalyst of all this, that I come on here and explain. You know, for anybody that's in here now, for anybody that may watch this later, and then we'll get to the fun stuff of talking about these movies, I promise. Um, but there were some posts made earlier today. I'm not going to say by who, because or who they were about, because I think everybody in the know knows who the people are. Either that, or you have asked me, or asked the other person, or whatever. Okay. But, um, due to certain changes made in my channel that were fully my, due to my actions, my decision, uh, and nobody else's, because I am the owner of this channel. Um, but it seems as if uh, friends of mine, other, other people that know me, uh, got caught in the crossfire of the goings on between me and the person I had to ask to leave the channel. You know, I didn't tell them to leave the chat. Just, I told them I was going to have to rearrange some things and something had to go. This person became upset after that and started attacking not only me, but everybody around me. And so I'm here to tell you guys that the decision was mine and mine alone. The decision was mine and mine alone for there to no longer be a midday with Dana and Jay. That was nobody else's decision. Nobody was talking in my ear, telling me to do things. And they most certainly weren't telling me to get rid of Jay so they could take their place. That's not how things work around here. Okay? I am the owner of the channel. I make the decisions about who's on and who's not on. And I make those decisions on my own. So if anybody wants to blame me or they want to point fingers, hey, point fingers at me. Okay? And I'm not chastising anybody that's in here right now. I'm just saying this to the public at large. Anybody that may have any misconceptions about what went down and what led to certain people or a certain person leaving the channel at my request. It was at my request. Not anybody else's. Nobody you know, push me in that direction. I just want to make that plain because it's not worth all of this drama and people getting hurt to the point that it's dangerous to their health. Okay. So 
I will take complete responsibility for anything anybody wants to throw at me. I will, you, you can point fingers at me till you're blue in the face. But please, I beg you, do not blame anybody else for this. Okay? And that's all I'm going to say about it. I'll, I'll try to be mum's the word on it. But I felt it was my duty as the owner of this channel to squash any rumors that might go floating around that are incorrect. Okay? So, uh, let's see who, who else we got in here. And I, yeah, I'll read messages in, in here, even if they pertain to what I just talked about. Uh, John, you say, you don't have to read this yet. I know you're talking, but... I found this killer Halloween Myers bo house box on Etsy. It's for the 4Ks. I'll post a link to you if you're interested. Oh, that sounds awesome, John. Yes, please. I would love that. Uh, X-Ray, you say you don't even know what the hell is going on. Well, you're in the minority, X-Ray, I think. <laughs> and be, just be glad that you missed all that, okay? Um Hey, Retro Horror, you say, I think any reasonable person would have made the decision after seeing that magic watch along. It was pretty clear. Well, I, you know, Retro, I, I just wish it had occurred to me earlier. But as I've said before, I'm uh, weak-willed and too soft-hearted sometimes for my own good. And it, it backfired terribly on me this time. But uh, but thank you for saying that. I appreciate that. Uh, John, you say, I blame you, Dana. I blame you for getting Tara at 10 Killer on 4K. <laughs> John. Oh, man. It's good to see you back in here, John. So, if you guys and gals will permit me, I'm going to step away, because you know i got to have my baby bottle of Zero Sugar Mountain Dew, but I will return here in just a second. I'm going to take myself out of the stream, though, so y'all don't have to watch me walk back and forth. All right, I am back now. I'm going to finish up my sandwich. Uh, thank you, Blissful. Blissful says, please hit the thumbs up. Thank you. So now, gang, we're going to get to these movies tonight, okay? All right, first up is Blood Hook. How can you take a movie like this seriously, right? And I don't take it seriously <laughs> at all. But I have a lot of fun with it, okay? Any movie that has dead people being strung through, uh, you know, a stringer for fish. You know, you catch the fish and you put, up, put their, you know, like a hook thing through their mouth. And they're all strung on, on this stringer. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. Whatever it's called. It might be called a stringer. Um, any movie that has that or um, I think cicadas or cicadas, however you want to say it. Driving someone crazy enough to kill. 
Um, I mean, this movie has it all. It is so wacky. It's so off the wall and so much fun that Lloyd Kaufman and Michael Hertz from Trauma released this sucker, okay? It's so out there that they they put it out. Now, this is a Meninger Syndrome release. So, let me tell you a little bit about Bloodhook in case you're not familiar. The thingy my bobs. That's right, Blissel. That's all we got. And John, you say it's serious stuff, Wisconsin fishing. Yeah, that's exactly right. It is Wisconsin uh, fishing. And this is the feature film debut from director Jim Mallon, who did Mystery Science Theater 3000, the movie. Um, so let me tell you a little short plot synopsis for this. So 17 years ago, Peter's grandfather went missing under mysterious circumstances and kind of funny if you watch it at the beginning. Now Peter and his friends have returned to the placid Wisconsin town to check out his inherited lake house and to partake in the annual musky madness. Yes, you heard it correctly. Musky madness fishing competition. Soon after his arrival, Peter begins to sense uh, that something isn't quite right, but none of his friends nor the local sheriff will believe him. As townsfolk and tourists begin to disappear, Peter becomes determined to solve the mystery as well as that of his grandfather's disappearance and soon finds himself facing off against a fish hook. And again, you heard it correctly, a fish hook wielding madman. How could you not have fun with this movie? I don't know. I don't know how anybody could have a bad time, but maybe there is somebody. But this yet again was another movie that I do believe I remember seeing this artwork on the VHS back in the day when I went to my local video rental store. But for whatever reason, I never ran it. Okay. Hence, I never watched it until after me and Steve were married. In fact, I watched it for the first time just, you know, two, three so years ago. So when Vinegar Syndrome came out with this Blu-ray, hey, I had to get it. And Steve was like, why on earth did you get that? He said, I had that downloaded on the hard drive. You could watch it in HD. You didn't have to buy it. But you know me and my weird quirkiness. I I felt like I had to, to buy it. So, you know, I, it, it is just so, so wild that, I, you know, I can I could sit here and go through every crazy scene you have this punk guy who uses a fishing lure as an earring um of course you have the cicada sounds that are driving that guy the killer crazy you have people getting hooked with great big old hooks and being pulled into the water only to end up on this fish stringer um just so outrageous, you know, it's not meant to be taken seriously, obviously. Um, but I had a lot of fun with it the first time I watched it. I've had a lot of fun with it a few times since. And Russell, thank you for bringing that up. Russell says, love Blood Hook. Going to watch it again on YouTube. So there you go, gang. If you want to watch it for free and don't own this one, you can watch it on YouTube. And I would highly, highly suggest you do that. You know, the other funny thing about this is, you know, it's cheap, it's low budget, it's trashy, it's all that. But this sucker from 1986 is 111 minutes long. 111 minutes long. I, now, I don't know if it needs to be that long, but it's fun all the way through, so... Uh, I'm not going to give it my top rating, but I am going to give this four dead eights out of five. 
because uh, I think that just suits this movie. So, that is Blood Hook. All right. Let's move, um, which, moving on, this movie is fantastic. As you can see, Arrow put this out. This is a Thanksgiving horror movie. And this Thanksgiving, it's not cranberry sauce. Okay. As we can clearly see right there. Um, so for people that have said that they've seen every Thanksgiving horror movie ever made, although there are only a handful, I believe, including Eli Roth's Thanksgiving, which I think was clearly the best thing Eli Roth ever put out. But Blood Rage is just, it's another fun one. Um, it's crazy, wacky, low-budget fun. Plus, you get a blink-and-you'll-miss performance by none other than Ted Raimi as a condom salesman in the drive-in bathroom. What a topper to the movie, okay? That's already brimming with goodness, okay? Uh, we also have uh, Louise Lasser from Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. Um, you get a uh, special effects courtesy of Ed French, who also did Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Ed French also has a small part as a woman's uh, boyfriend. So, what else do we have here? We have uh, a little plot synopsis for you. Hey, you gory tiger. Twins Todd and Terry seem like sweet boys. That is until one of them takes an axe to the face of a fellow patron at the local drive-in. Todd is blamed for the bloody crime and institutionalized, whilst twin brother Terry goes free. Ten years later, as the family gathers around the table for a Thanksgiving meal, the news comes in that Todd has escaped, but has the real killer, in fact, been in their midst all along. Now, this movie was shot in 1983, but not released until 1987. So, it's that shelved for that long. Um, I agree with this uh, little blurb on the back that it's a gruesome slice of 80 slasher heaven. Now, it's restored from the original negative for its world Blu-ray debut. And like I said, Arrow Video put this out. God rest, or God bless our souls, I should say. Not God rest, but God bless our souls uh, for putting this out. How how long is uh, Blood Rage Wrestle? Um, it, well, if you watch the uncut version, it's 82 minutes. If you watch the cut version, it's 79 minutes. So there are at least two different versions of this film. It was also... Uh, release on the title Nightmare at Shadow Woods, which I think was the first way that I watched it. Now, if you get this three disc set, though, uh, you get three versions of the film. So you get Blood Rage, the original home video version. You get Nightmare at Shadow Woods, the theatrical recut, and an alternate composite cut combining footage from both versions. Um, you also get, uh, let's see, so you get Nightmare at Shadow Woods, the re-edited 1987 theatrical cut featuring footage not seen in the Blood Rage home video versions. Um, plus you get an alternate composite cut of the feature combining footage from the home video and the theatrical versions. Um, now, the disc one, yeah, disc one is like the brand new 2K restoration of the hard home video version transferred from the camera negative and featuring the original title card of Slasher. That was also a, an alternate title. So, you also get a three minutes with Ted Raimi segment, which I'll take three minutes. If three minutes is all you'll give me of Ted Raimi, I'll take it. 
Um, I didn't think about that, John, but you say, can we all acknowledge how much the lead guy in Blood Hook looks like Maynard Keenan from the from Tool? Yeah, I wish I had a good close-up picture of that guy, but yeah, I didn't even think about that, John. Um, yes, uh, John, this was filmed in Jacksonville, Florida, or the majority of it was. I think there was one part, the drive-in part at the beginning, that was filmed at a New Jersey drive-in, I believe. And that was the part that a very young Ted Ramey was in. So, how am I going to write this? Well, you know, I got to give it five, did I tell five? It has Ted freaking Ramey on it. Come on. It's a Thanksgiving horror movie. It's got a lot of good gore, in my opinion. It's wacky. It's corny sometimes. It's got everything. So, yeah, I got to give it five dead out of five. Okay. So, the last one... And guys and gals, I know I don't have anybody on here with me tonight, so this one's going to be kind of quick. But in any event, I hope that you guys and gals have enjoyed it. And I can, of course, stay on a little bit after we talk about the movies uh, to answer any questions y'all might have. Or um, I noticed that I forgot to give people the uh, upcoming schedule for the rest of the week. Russell says, sorry, never heard or seen Tool, so I can't tell. I think my brother used to 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 listen to them or watch, you know, videos or something of them. <clears throat> so, this is the Blood Trilogy. I think Steve gave this to me. But the movie I want to focus on tonight is Blood Feast from 1963, where... A sheep's tongue is basically pulled out of one woman's mouth. And it's obvious that it's not her tongue. But do we really want anybody to cut her tongue out? I think not. Um, so we've got an Egyptian cultist is hired to cater a birthday party. So he prepares a culinary catastrophe made from the body parts of sexy young women this movie's just a, an hour and uh six minutes it's 66 minutes long gang so it's not very long at all is it bad yeah is it got some pretty cool effects for 1963 yeah uh in my opinion even the sheep's tongue getting pulled out of this woman's mouth does it have Connie Mason in it reading her lines off the furniture? Because, you know, I'm not trying to make her sound dumb or anything, but she was a Playboy playmate. She was not an actress and could not remember her lines. Hence, Herschel Gordon Lewis had to tape the lines literally uh, on pieces of furniture in the room around her. So, if it looks like she's reading off a lampshade, she probably is. So, but that, to me, adds to the charm of this. I can watch this anytime. It doesn't have to, you know, be a, a special time to watch it. You can drop everything and watch Blood Feast and feel satisfied when you're finished, right? Um. And you, some of you might be thinking that I haven't seen this, but yeah, but Dana, is it too bloody? Nah. You know, you're talking about that really super red 3M blood that doesn't really look realistic, right? So you know it's fake. You know the sheep's tongue is fake. You know a woman couldn't have a tongue that big in her mouth. I mean, we're not talking about Gene Simmons here. We're talking about, you know, regular women. <laughs> Russell, you say it's a cool fight. You talking about Connie Mason reading her lines off the furniture, the lampshades and everything, and the couch, I guess. <clears throat> Russell says he loves Blood Feast as well. Um, yeah, they didn't call Herschel Gordon Lewis the godfather of gore for nothing. 
I mean, look, he did, he did these, these three movies on here. He did Blood Feast, Color Me Blood Red, and 2000 Maniacs. We're talking about the original 2000 Maniacs, right? Which I don't think I've seen Color Me Blood Red or 2000 Maniacs. I actually need to watch those. Blood Feast is one that I've watched multiple times. Um, but, uh, although I can't give this one a five, heck, I'm still going to give it a four because it's just so damn entertaining and so hilariously bad. You know, thank goodness Herschel Gordon Lewis didn't take himself seriously because sometimes we just need movies like this, right? Uh, we just need, as Joe Ball would say, slime glop all over the screen. You know, when you when you had a hard day at work or just had a hard day in general, and you put something as zany as Blood Feast in, you're sure to have a good time. You're sure to have a fantastic time. And if you don't, you can blame me. You can say, Dana, I had a shitty day and I sat down to watch Blood Feast and I didn't feel better. And uh, I can't refund your money, but I can say I'm sorry. And I'll say it. In fact, I'm sorry in advance. If you've never seen Blood Feast and you watch it on when you're having a bad day and it don't make you feel better, if it don't make you chuckle a little bit, this gal's sorry about that. You know, I would never want to give you wrong information you guys and gals that kind of depend on me and other reviewers to uh, let you know what's out there and what's good, bad, ugly, and all that. Um, so we give this one four deadites out of five. No, I still need to watch that one. In fact, I will need to watch it, Russell, upcoming for Everybody Wants England stream. Because you say you didn't mind 2001 Maniacs with Robert England and Lynn Shea. And uh, this little trilogy was put out by Something Weird Video. I don't know how many of you guys and gals get a lot of things from Something Weird Video. But they do put out an eclectic bunch of, of films. But I always have a good time when I watch them, right? And... I always have a good time when I watch Blood Feast. And I have a good time watching Blood Hook. And I have a, also I have a good time watching Blood Rage. In fact, I probably wouldn't have these movies in my collection if I didn't have fun with them, right? Oh. That concludes the review portion of this stream. So if anybody has any comments or questions for me... Um, Oh, I will tell everybody what we got coming up for the rest of the week. Um, I have picked out my movies for Terror Time Tea tomorrow. So you guys get to hear it first because you're live in the stream. But tomorrow will be Terror Time Tea, probably about 11.45, I'll say. Uh, I'll try to pin down a really good time on Fridays. Uh, you know, where y'all aren't left guessing, well, when's Dana going to do this today? But the movies I picked for Terror Time T to review or talk about are Ghost House, not Witchery, but Ghost House. And Happy Hell Night. And don't worry, gang, if you haven't heard of these, I'm going to tell you all about those tomorrow. And I'm also going to be sipping on a cup of tea and... I'm not sure what kind of uh, treat I will have with my tea, uh, but I'll try to come up with something interesting. Excuse me. Uh, then Friday afternoon at 1 p.m. Eastern time, we got a new, all new, spectacular stream with me and my friend, my very, very good friend Candace and uh, we're going to be premiering or debuting or whatever Friday Foolish and uh, me and Candace plan to do that for upcoming Fridays unless you know 
Um, there are appointments that, you know, she can't, you know, I wouldn't ask her to break an appointment uh, for the stream. So we're going to try to do them most every Friday unless, you know, heaven forbid one of us is sick or something or, you know, they, we, we've got something that we just can't get out of. Um, we plan on doing that every Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, I got a movie munchies and a couple of watch alongs coming up. Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time will be Blood Diner. This one's going to be fun. I'd like to get a whole bunch of us in here on the stream for that watch along. And Sunday, I'm not sure what my movie Munchies is going to be at around 3 p.m. Eastern Time. But I think, I'm pretty sure I'm going to take it from the Death for Dinner book that Candace sent me. I just don't know exactly which recipe I'm going to be uh, trying out. Uh, Sunday, also starting at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, will be Multiplicity starring Michael Keaton and Amy McDowell. Um, I believe Candace is going to join me for that. Uh, Chris may be on here, but I don't know 100% yet. But um, anybody can join us if they want to. Um, just let me know and I'll make sure you get the link to come on here and experience either one or both of these films. So that is my spiel for what's going on the rest of the week and into the weekend. And you know what happens on Monday, another Stephen's Kingdom. On Tuesday will be another Everybody Wants England. And Wednesday, me and TJ will be starting on the first half of season four episodes of Creepshow. And then, of course, I'll probably do another Seductive Poison, the Resurgence, Triple Threat Review Show. And Friday, hopefully, will be another Terror Time Tea and Friday Foolish. And then we'll have a couple more watch-alongs and the movie Munchies, hopefully. Oh, by the way, that cake I made, if I did make, even if I did make it myself, that thing was delicious. I uh, mean, Steve have been eating on that. Thank you, Blissful. Blissful says another bloody good live. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, I probably can stay on here a few more minutes. Um, if anybody wants to comment or ask me any questions or anything like that. Uh, or make suggestions, you know, for watch-alongs in the future. And I, I'd also like to take this moment to um, let everybody know um, it only takes a half a second to like the videos or subscribe. Those things are all free. If you are financially able and want to join the channel, you get some perks, including making me watch any two movies of your choice, even if I hate them. Uh, <laughs> uh, for review on the show and usually i do that on thursdays and the person that picks those for me to review can actually um come on the stream with me to talk about the movies i know darren does that when he picks them um and you can join for as little as five dollars a month and get that perk and there are other levels just ask russell because he's at the Henrietta Deadite level. So he's paying a little bit more. Um, and also, you know, I've got the Deadites on Deck shop. Which, hopefully, I'll be able to put some t-shirts. Um, and maybe the tumblers and stuff on the shop which I'm putting the link in there now, deadites.ondeck.com. And uh, the Booga Booga Bears are there. They're live. They're available for you to purchase. Just keep in mind that they are custom made. Uh, you can tell me what kind of design you want on the bear's shirt. 
and I will try to make it a reality for you. Excuse me, and we'll uh, allow you to okay the design before I actually place it on the shirt. That's a good. That is a good quote, Russell. You say, "Don't hate films; just enjoy them for what they are." Blissful agrees as well. So, there are uh, some t-shirts uh, uh, available on the Tee Public store as well, but I, I'll be totally honest with you guys, I'll be offering those designs on my shop here shortly, and it will definitely be cheaper shipping price than, than Tee Public. Even though T Public does an excellent job with them, um, their prices are, you know, and they don't even extend that to the designers uh, that make the graphics and stuff. They um, basically all I get is two dollars per shirt. <laughs> um, but you know, I'm not trying to complain, complain, complain or anything. But. Uh, I guess I'll probably stay on here about three more minutes till 840. And then, uh, then I'll get off of here for the night and maybe uh, see if I can get some stuff ready for Friday Foolish tomorrow. Because, you know, work's been, oh, work has been... Not a nightmare, but it's just been super, super busy. Oh, sorry, gang. I hate to be yawning. So, anybody have any questions, comments, um, anything, any uh, movies they want to suggest for watch-alongs? And I'll double-check and um, make sure I don't, one, already have them on, on my list. If I do, I'll let you know the date. Uh, something else I'm planning on doing here really soon is, hey, Rad Hammer, you say you like Blood Rage? I do as well. I mean, in fact, I love Blood Rage. <laughs> um, but I, I'm going to try to make this work kind of like, you won't be able to click on it or anything, but my idea is to make, you know, like the streaming services and like cable TV and like how the TV guide used to be, it would have a grid and it would show you all the different programs and what time they were coming on. That's kind of what I want to do is like a, a video that just kind of stream or not streams, but plays for a little while and shows the upcoming schedule with some kind of background music playing uh, just behind it, you know. Um, so I'm going to try to put that together, figure out how to make that work. Okay, Russell, you have a great night. You say it's been great, stream Dana Bliss. Catch you next time. Hi, Rat. You like that idea too, Blissful? Yeah, I mean, it was funny because uh, Candace and I both, like, we always joke how in sync we are. And, and me and Blissful joke about how in sync we are too, that we tend to think the same things at the nearly the same time and all that. It's kind of eerie, but kind of cool too. But, uh, but gang, it is now 840. And I want to thank each and every one of you that joined me on this live stream tonight for the triple threat review show number 10, already 10 of these in the, in the books. Um, and uh, be sure to tune in tomorrow about 11.45 Eastern Time in morning, <laughs> keep in mind, for Terror Time Tea, where again, I'll be talking about Ghost House and Happy Hell Night and be sipping some tea and hopefully eating some delicious little snack to go with my tea. Come 1 p.m. Eastern Time, we're premiering. We're debuting Friday Foolish with me and Candace. Uh, 
who knows what we're going to talk about. We'll talk. We'll try to talk about movies, books, music, television shows, whatever. We'll throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. Um, we're really both looking forward to this. It's uh, it's going to be refreshing, I hope, for everybody. Um, and then be sure to join me for the watch-alongs for Blood Diner and Multiplicity Saturday and Sunday and a Movie Munchies Saturday, or I mean Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, I'm going to echo Blissful who says good night, everyone. So everybody have a wonderful rest of your night. And yay, it's Friday tomorrow. <laughs> but I'm going to skedaddle on out of here, gang. And I'll see everybody next time.